Welcome. My name is Al Rodenberg, and this is a new series of podcasts, video podcasts, introducing entrepreneurs and business owners from all over the world. Today, I'll be visiting with Michael C. Clark. Michael is the CEO of Personality Pitching. He is a highly skilled pitch coach and consultant specializing in assisting entrepreneurs and startups in honing their pitching skills. With a with a genuine passion for his craft, Michael thrives on empowering his clients to cultivate confidence and effectively close deals. He offers invaluable guidance through his expertise, enabling entrepreneurs to deliver compelling pitches that captivate their audience and drive success in the competitive business landscape. Wow, that, that's quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> you, you must keep very busy. I sure do. Because... You know, at the end of the day, it all boils down. I think that paragraph is into one word, confidence. Uh, right. What I do with my clients is just help them build their confidence. They're already geniuses at what they do. And I just help them raise that confidence bar up so they can talk about it with anyone, anywhere. That's awesome. That's awesome. So let, let's start off by learning a little bit about you, Michael. Um, how would your family and friends describe you? I would say adventurous creative and not the normal creative like uh creative like always kind of figuring out ways to stuff i get a lot of people that come to me mike i got this problem got that problem or might be hey i'm buying a car you know where i can find a deal so <laughs> i was like those challenges i have a good friend of mine that we went to junior high school together he still calls me he's like i'm about to buy a dishwasher what do you think <laughs> not that i'm an expert in dishwashers but i love the research and looking stuff up and finding oh, yeah. deals so yep yep i'm i'm there with you i i love to do research and the internet has made it so easy you know exactly. the last 25 years it's been amazing um so how would you describe yourself in one word um how would i describe myself I would say when I do look at myself, I do think of myself as like focused, hardworking, because mm -hmm. um, I kind of live with my own work ethic of like, come on, let's go. Um, sure. Happy. I would describe myself as happy. I, I make a big point of laughing and having a good time. Whether that's it's awesome. Clients or family. So sure. No, that that's a, a great, great uh, quality to have, you know, because I've, I've been around people that are the opposite and it's uh it's yeah. a challenge but uh so I feel inspired to help them become a little more happy. Exactly. Um, so who has been the most important person in your life? I would say well first and foremost my relationship with God. Oh, absolutely. And and second to that especially growing up my mother Mm -hmm. Seeing her just, you know, just really work hard, her influence, and also my dad, just them really kind of pushing, always believing in me. And I would say back to my mom, that unconditional just belief, like you could do it. Like I would bring her, oh, this happened, that happened, this isn't working out. But you know, it's like, well, Michael, you'll bounce back, you'll be fine. And oh, that voice always plays in my head. That's awesome. So when you were a child, what uh, did you have like a, a dream job that you thought you might uh, be doing? I always thought I was going to be a pilot in the Air Force. Oh, wow. When I was little, you know, you, my dad would take me around and, you know, they say, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'm like a pilot. And I think it was just because like <laughs> you know, planes were just, I was, you know, I love planes and the idea of flying. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be a fighter jet, you know on like a fighter jet or something like that. Yeah. That's awesome. And here you are. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pitching. Didn't pursue the uh, pilot thing, but uh, That's okay. I do love to fly I and to travel. I to be a senator, so, hey, I'm, you know, I'm here. Exactly. <laughs> Things change. Um, when when you think about your passions in life, what what do you feel are some of the things you're most passionate about? Seeing people reach their full potential. Mm -hmm. When I talk to someone, I can hear when they're kind of dumbing it down or when they're trading someone else's dream for their own. I can hear the that lack of confidence in their voice or how they just may be doing their business. And so 
the, my drive and passion is just like, oh, it's almost like a contractor. I drive by the house and like a contractor drives by the house and they see the grass is high. The windows are broken. The shutters are a uh, disarray. The roof has a hole in it, but a contractor sees a beautiful mansion. And a lot of times when I work with my clients and even with my family, the same thing with my wife is a realtor. I'm like, you are a million dollar realtor. And she hadn't done her first rental. Right. So being able to see that vision for other people yeah. and wanting them to reach their goals is a big passion of mine. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, was there a, a turning point in your life when things kind of all of a sudden things clicked or, or switched for you? Missions trip to Africa. I went on a missions trip in 1998 to Kenya, Africa, and that flipped a switch for me. Oh, wow. Going to a third world country that was just so different in terms of resources, but you realize, one, how blessed you are in America, and two, how little you need to be happy and successful in some place like a Kenya. So when I came sure. back here, I had made the decision, one, I quit my job. And I said, I never want to work a job where I'm not happy. And two, I always want to travel. And from 98 all the way to this day, I've always worked a job I was happy with. And there was always some element of travel. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. So tell us a little bit about your business and, and what you do for small business entrepreneurs and, and business in general. Sure, sure. Um, well, it, the foundation of it is definitely pitching, helping them with their pitch. That could be the 30 second and one minute pitch you'd use at a networking event, the three minute pitch you would use for a pitch competition. At the, you know, the core of it is you as a business owner, expert, startup founder, being able to articulate like, who you are, what you do, who you do it for with a call to action, all in 30 seconds to a minute. And I work one-on-one -on -one group. I do workshops. And on the entrepreneur side, I tend to get into not only the pitch, but also consultations, how they do their discovery sessions, pricing, packaging, um, because many times entrepreneurs just don't price their uh, products and services where they should be. Right. And then on the right. founder side, I help them with their pitch, pitch deck, as well as how to handle pitch meetings. Wow. So you're almost like a business consultant then. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I make a point of saying pitch coach and consultant. I wear both hats. It's interchangeable. Uh, from a coaching perspective, we work collaboratively together from a consultant. I do have a blueprint for pitching and pricing and discovery sessions that I've created that mm -hmm. I have founders that have raised up to $20 million. And my entrepreneurs have seen an increase in their revenue from 50 all the way up to 300%. Wow. So have you been doing this for a long time? Yeah, personality pitching is about three to four years old. Mm -hmm. um, but pitching I've been doing for over a decade started when I was pitching my own film and television projects mm -hmm. in New York in LA. Oh, and, wow. you know, so I was, I, I was a little introvert, I didn't even realize it, like, but I'm what I consider an ambivert. So I'm a little extrovert, a little introvert. And yeah. uh, so yeah. as I was working through how to pitch, I came up with a bit of a blueprint. And then it works for introverts and works for people that are extroverts that also just want to have a compelling message. And that's where I started. Wow. So what, what kind of films were you producing? Uh, well, most of them were like, some of them were biopics, some uh, like some were narrative films, a couple of documentaries, uh, mm -hmm. some reality projects on the television side. And I was pitching them to uh, different networks at Viacom, BT, VH1 own. So, yeah. Oh, wow. That sounds yeah. exciting. Do you still yeah. do that? No, no. I've been, I'm totally in like the consultant and coaching space. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I mean, it's, it's tough to keep pitching. You know, there's been projects that <laughs> have seen the light of day and some projects that have some seen the light of day through someone else's eyes. I'll just leave it at that. Um, but it's it's a long road, but I do enjoy you know, helping writers and producers pitch their products hmm. and projects. Yeah. What what changed you from one to the, the other? Yeah, as I was doing it, especially in the area of film, it went from just pitching the project to fundraising. 
And I got around a couple of VCs and I love the idea of pitching the project to VCs, helping creatives articulate their creative message in a way that a VC says, oh my gosh, this makes financial sense. And it was almost like, what, what's that TV show? Shark Tank, right? Yeah, yeah, very much like a Shark Tank, <laughs> right? So they come on there and they think their okay. idea is so amazing, right? But can they articulate their revenue model, you know, their target market, articulate yeah. in such a way that it makes fiscal sense and not just a great idea? That is really wonderful. What what motivates you to to keep going every day? Uh, first, my family, uh, just uh, and always wanting to spend more time with them, have freedom. I know what it is to kind of go into the city, wherever that is, metropolis, right? Every single day, back and forth. But now, you know, over the last few years, having full control of my time and just driven for that freedom of entrepreneurship, plus um, the transformation and outcome in my clients. Just really, I every time the Zoom goes on or I meet with someone, I light up because I'm just like, hey, how did it go? And I got a text just yesterday. I had a client, a web developer, had never, I don't think she was ever paid more than $5,000 for a project. Mm -hmm. She was usually making about $300 on each project because she had to pay her staff. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yesterday I got a text. She's like, hey, the firm accepted my offer. I'm getting $7,500. Now the same project she charged $5,000 for. She had the courage now. And when I started running the numbers with her, I was like, it's not okay for, you know, this person on the team to get a thousand, that person gets a thousand and you're only getting 300 and you're putting the whole thing together and you own the company. Right. So right. she saw that. And like I said, she has this confidence. She's happy about it. Now with the next call and the next meeting, she feels more comfortable asking for that higher rate. So that's when I hear that and get that. I'm like, yes, let's keep going. That is awesome. That is awesome. So how do you approach your networking when you are, you know, marketing your own business? What What's sure. your approach? How, how, what do you feel is real successful for you? Um, Coming, <clears throat> coming into each interaction with, <clears throat> with options, meaning... Mm -hmm. Not the thought of, are you going to be my client? But with the thought of, hey, maybe I'm your referral to another client. Um, I often in my networking will say, well, what's your biggest challenge? I say that in my cons consultations and discoveries. I want to know what's the biggest challenge. And I'm thinking to myself, how can I help you? Not so much if you hire me, but maybe it's an introduction you need. You know, or maybe even in our networking, I was networking just last night and I I, I provoke someone in a conversation to really look at kind of helping themselves versus helping their clients. And again, mm. um, they won't be my client, but from a networking standpoint, they go, you know what? This guy is an authority. He is sharp. Right. He does know what he's right. talking about. So yeah. So when I, I, I approach it very neutral, not one of kind of clawing away. This is what I do. I try to really listen, ask thought provoking questions and just sure. see where it goes from there. That's great. Yeah. So do you meet your clients in person or do you do Zoom calls for the most part or how do you? Yeah, you know? I would say it's it's about 80 to 90 percent Zoom. There yeah. are sometimes I do VIP days um, and I do have several clients that are close to me. But the ones I do meet in person, I usually fly to them. We work together for a day, but most of the calls um, and interactions on Zoom. That's great. So here's a question. What have I not asked you that you wish I'd asked you? Um, that I wish to ask, I think I will tell you, you know, for entrepreneurs listening, what is still my biggest challenge? Mm -hmm. Uh, cause it, it's not all, you know, it's not all roses and rainbows. Right. I would say still the biggest challenge is a couple of things still finding, I think my footing in this AI space. I think we're all challenged by this. Oh like, yeah. So Needless to say, can you go to ChatGPT and find an amazing pitch? Yeah, you can. But will it coach you, give you the confidence, be able to discern, you know, read the room and other things? Thank God, not yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then there's some people that are totally scared off by it and won't, in, you know, won't use it for years. But I think finding my footing in the AI space, um, and one thing that problem that I'm definitely working through is you know, always want more one-to-many opportunities. And 
there have been some speaking engagements that have been opening up, which have been great. So, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. What, what do you normally speak on? Um, I have a couple of things. Uh, five tips to instantly improve your pitch. Hmm. Uh, Ten mistakes entrepreneurs make when pitching and how to avoid them. Mm-hmm. So, and I can uh, I can give you a preview of the five things they can instantly do to instantly improve their pitch. If you if we do we have time? Yeah, yeah, we're good. You can do it in less than two minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead. Perfect. All right. And the first one is to write out your pitch word for word. Mm-hmm. Most people don't write it out. They go off memory. And then there's a lot of ums and ahs. It changes every time they pitch. I, I've been there. And I've yeah. done it both ways. And, and definitely <laughs> writing it out helps. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it won't sound robotic or boring. What happens is once you kind of memorize it, lock it in, mm-hmm. And that leads me to the second tip, practice it when you're by yourself, especially now we're dealing with Zooms and cameras and social audio, be able to deliver that pitch without worrying about head nods and somebody being with you. Third thing is practice it with friends and family. Don't practice it with the most negative friend or family member you have that kicks the dog and it always rains. Now, (laughs) practice it with someone who's going to give you some constructive feedback and ask questions like, who is it for? Did this make sense? Is there anything I should add or take out? Fourth, have different pitches for different situations. There's no such thing as a perfect pitch, but you should have a 30 second version, a one minute version. Don't try to pack all of what you do into a pitch. I have a pitch for entrepreneurs, a pitch for founders, Hmm. and one that combines it. And then the last tip, and I hopefully I'm still under two minutes, is have a call to action. Oh, for the business, ask for them to click, ask for them to go somewhere. You ever see a sales page and it says, click here to join? That's because people have to be led. So, Absolutely. I yeah. used to be a purchasing agent and I can't tell you the number of salespeople that would call on me yeah. and they just leave me their brochures. And I'm yep. like, oh, okay. Well, have exactly. a nice day. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with this? So yeah, so those, if you do those, as you listen to this podcast, it will instantly improve your pitch. Awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much for being with us today. I, uh, you know, I, I'm just really impressed with what you're doing because I think it's so important for small business owners in today's world with so much competition and AI coming on board that we have somebody that can help us coach us and and help us with the confidence because that's a big part in the entrepreneurial space. That's right. You know, you're you're fighting for business. You're you're trying to understand all the ins and outs of business because most entrepreneurs think, hey, I'm good at baking, but are you good at HR? Exactly. Oh, are, you, are, are you good at negotiating your lease? You know, whatever those things are, right? That sure. every business has to deal with. So I think it's wonderful you're there to help coach them and, and be a consultant. So thanks again, Michael. I'm I'm looking forward to visiting with you again. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. For those listening, thank you for making it to the end. And thank you again.